Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Connie, and I'm going to be telling you our Sunday School lesson for the day, which is about the Great Commission. So, what you doing? Oh, well, hi, Katrina. Well, why don't you sit down? So, I'm doing our Sunday School lesson for the week. So, let me ask you something. Have you ever been on a super special, important mission? You mean like trying to capture the flag in Jericho? Kind of. A little bit more important than that. I want to tell you about the most important mission of all. It's called the Great Commission. The Great Commission? I think I have heard that before, but can you remind me of what it is? Absolutely. So we can read about it in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Let me read it to you. Jesus came and told his disciples, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you. Yeah, but Jesus was telling his disciples to do that, not us. Well, but we are disciples of Jesus. So even though he told them that a long time ago, he was still talking to us too. You know, last week was Easter, and that's when he rose from the dead. We called that the resurrection. And then after he rose again, he came and he stayed with his disciples for 40 days. And it was during this time that he kind of gave instructions to his disciples on what our mission is to be. And then Jesus rose into the clouds to go back to heaven to be with God, which we call the ascension. Oh, wait, you mean we have a secret mission from God? I can be like a spy. You know my nickname is Captain Ninja. This is so cool. I can get on my black ninja outfit and practice some sneaking around the house. Wow. Um, no. It, it is kind of cool, but it's not a secret mission. It's not? No. Jesus wants everyone to know about this mission. And there are three things that Jesus asks us to do. And the first one is that we have to go and make disciples. I know I hear the word disciple in church and Sunday school a lot, but I'm not sure I know what it means. So a disciple means to be a student or learner of something. So if we are disciples of Jesus, we are learning more about him. That is why we read the Bible, we go to church, we go to Sunday school. The disciples long ago sure were lucky because they had Jesus right there to teach them. If they had questions, they could just ask him right there. Well, but remember, Jesus is with us in our heart all the time. And we can talk to him anytime we want. All we have to do is pray. And there are other disciples here that can help us answer some of the questions we have, like pastors and our Sunday school teachers. And the Bible is also a great way to find answers, too. Okay. That makes sense. So the first part of our mission is to be a disciple and tell others about Jesus. Mm -hmm. How can I do that? Hmm. Oh, wait, I have a megaphone that can make my voice really loud so everyone can hear me. Jesus loves you. Who is to be a disciple of Jesus? Wow. <laughs> Katrina, I love that you're so excited to tell all the other people about Jesus but you don't have to use a megaphone. You can actually, yeah, you can actually start telling people just by talking that, you know, Jesus loves you. And it, it could be just when you're visiting somebody, it could be on the phone or even when you're playing out in your neighborhood. And remember he died on the cross for all of us so that our sins would be forgiven. Oh yeah, we, we just celebrated Easter last week, which is what Easter is all about. Jesus died on the cross and then rose from the dead so that our sins would be forgiven. Absolutely right. Okay, so no ninja costume or megaphone. What is the second part of the mission? Okay, so the second part is to baptize people in the name of Jesus. Oh, I've seen lots of babies baptized in church. Mm -hmm. Pastor Greg puts water on their head mm -hmm. and three times, mm -hmm. then makes the mark of the cross on the foreheads. Mm -hmm. Well, first, babies aren't the only people that can be baptized. Anybody can be baptized. What? You mean someone that's 100 years old could be baptized? 
if they're ready to put their trust into Jesus, yep. New disciples are baptized to show others that they belong to him now. And when we're baptized in the water, we are saved from our sins and we belong to Jesus. So when I take a shower, all the dirt just washes off. Sin comes off me too, like a special protective coat saying I belong to God. Oh, wait, so can I just dunk someone in the pool and say they're baptized? Uh, no, it really doesn't work that way. <laughs> Being baptized shows that you are ready to start a new life as a child of God. And after a disciple starts learning about Jesus, uh, they can actually talk to Pastor Greg or Pastor Teal about becoming baptized. Okay, that makes sense. Just to review, no ninja costume, no dunking of water in the pool. What's the last part of our mission? Okay, so the last thing is that he wants us to teach disciples to obey him. Mm, I hate the word obey. It means I have to listen to what someone else is trying, which is usually you. Yeah, but if you think about it, following what God wants us to do really isn't that hard. Putting God first, not hurting other people, being kind, helping other people. These are just a couple of ways that we can obey God's word. Don't we kind of already do those things right now? I guess that doesn't really sound that hard. I'm kind of sad that I can't dress up like a ninja now. Well, you know what? Who says you can't dress up to share the word of God? As long as you're doing what Jesus asks of you, I don't think God would mind a little creative approach. Awesome. Okay, so remember, the Great Commission is a mission given by Jesus that we are to follow. So it's kind of like our job. So there are three things that we have to do. One, we have to make disciples. Two, we need to baptize them in the name of Jesus. And the third and last one is to obey all that Jesus commands. So thanks for joining us in the storytelling portion of our Sunday school lesson. So the next part is going to be where we're going to be doing some activities and crafts. So make sure you stay tuned and listen up. All right, everyone. So we have three activities that we're going to be doing today to kind of help us remember what our Sunday school lesson was about. So the first thing you saw that one of our jobs is to tell other people about Jesus and to make disciples. So we are going to make our own little megaphone. So you need a piece of paper and a pencil or a marker and a pair of scissors and possibly a piece of tape or two. Or if you have a glue stick, that'll work too. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold your paper hamburger wise and then using your pencil or marker, you're going to draw the shape that we're going to be cutting out. So Katrina, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and then you're going to cut only on the line that you drew so that when you're finished, it's going to look like your megaphone. And the only thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to write on this. And what you're going to be writing, you're going to see, go into all the world and teach the gospel. And I drew all sorts of little, you know, hearts and, and you can color it or decorate it however you want. And then down on the bottom, I put shout the good news Jesus loves everyone, okay? So you can see what Katrina has done. You just kind of bring that around. You join both ends and you've got your little megaphone, okay? But you wanna make sure that you decorate it first before you put your tape or your glue, okay? So that's our first one to kind of remind us that that's a way that we can share the good news. So the second thing that we're gonna do is kind of like a little science experiment. So what you need is two cups, they can be paper or plastic, and you might want to ask mom or dad to help you out or whoever's with you at home. And you're also going to need some yarn or string, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to poke holes in the bottoms of both of these cups. Not really big, just little tiny holes. And then you're going to feed the yarn through, and you're going to make some pretty big knots, okay? So that when you pull it, it won't come out, all right? Now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to test some sound waves because another part of being a disciple is you also need to be a good listener. So as you are sharing the story of Jesus, you need to make sure that you're listening so that you can answer questions. Okay, so 
we're going to stand. I'm going to say something into my cup, but I'm going to whisper. And Katrina is going to be listening on the other side. And we're going to pull the string kind of tight, not really tight, but tight enough. Because what's going to happen is, is the sound from my whisper is going to travel on the string. And she's going to hear what I say. Okay. And she'll tell you what it is. Are you ready? I think I heard it. I think she said, did, did you say Jesus loves you? I did. I did. So try this at home. It's really a lot of fun and it's kind of cool. So uh, try that out. So that's our science experiment. Our last activity, you need a balloon and a marker. So what you're going to do is, is in the story, they talked about Jesus's resurrection where he rose from the dead. But then they also talked about his ascension, where after he spoke to his disciples, he rose up into the clouds so that he could be with his father in heaven. So what we're going to do is you're going to blow up a balloon. And then on that balloon, you are going to use your marker and write what are some things that you remembered about the lesson that you really liked? Or what are things that you're really thankful for? And you want to kind of like lift up in Thanksgiving to God. So we wrote family and we also wrote on there that Jesus died for us. So what I want you to do, I want you to watch because Katrina is going to show you what you're going to do. The first thing is you're going to stand up and you're going to take your balloon and you're going to try and throw it up in the air as high as you can and try to catch it. Your goal is to try and hit the ceiling and do that two or three times. Okay. So it's like we're throwing, whoa, we're really throwing it up there. Okay. So that's the first thing. The next thing I want you to do, this is another science part. We're going to use some static electricity. So I want you to take your balloon and I want you to rub it on your hair or your sweater or your pants and really get some charge in there. Okay. And you might have to do it for a couple of minutes. Oh, wow. See, we've got some electricity in there. So now you want to find the tallest person in your house and they are going to try and have the balloon stick to the wall as high as they can. So she's going to go over to the wall and we're going to see if it works as high as you can and see if it stays. <laughs> oh, I think we need more static electricity in there. Rub, rub, rub. So this is what I want you to try and do because this is going to help us to remember that we always want to lift our thanksgiving to God. There it is. It's hanging on the wall. All right. So really make sure that your parents take pictures, send us and let us know how things went. But I really want us to get ready to close in prayer. Thanks for joining us today. Katrina and I had a blast. There it is. Okay, so everyone bow our heads. Are we ready? Dear God, your love is so wonderful. Thank you for sending Jesus to live and die for us. His resurrection is the best news ever. We will share the good news of your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you have a fabulous week. Be sure to join us next week when we learn about how Peter starts to heal other people. Have a great week, guys. Bye.